Let's talk about biotransformation, biobiologic transformation to change. And so everything that you eat that is absorbed by the blood is going to be sent to the liver first for processing. Your liver really doesn't trust anything that you put in your mouth and it wants to see everything that you've eaten first. And so nothing goes directly into the bloodstream without it being looked at by the liver first. Why does your liver do this? Well, to detoxify the things that you are consuming that are toxic. Believe me, you are consuming plenty of toxic things and your liver just takes care of it so you think that you're eating things that are perfectly healthy and that's the way it's supposed to work. That's normal. But something else that happens, not only is your liver taking toxins and turning them into water-soluble, less toxic things for you to get rid of, but it's also transforming nutrients. It's creating things that you need uh, using the same chemistry. And that's something that's interesting to keep in mind about biotransformation. Not only are we detoxifying, but we are creating nutrients in the same way, using the same chemical reactions. And the main strategy going on with biotransformation is to take fat-soluble substances and make them water-soluble and by making them water soluble, we can get rid of them through the kidneys, through the urine. Take hemoglobin. When you break down the hemoglobin, when you recycle those cells, the hemoglobin is broken down into something called bilirubin, and the bilirubin is very toxic. The bilirubin is very fat soluble, it will build up in your brain and your liver and, and be lethal. And so it, your body is creating this toxin that would be lethal if you did not process it. Well, your liver sees this bilirubin and it conjugates it. It takes this large, similar to a glucose molecule, and makes the bilirubin very water soluble so you can eliminate it through your kidneys so that the fat soluble version of the bilirubin can't build up in your body and become toxic. And so that's the main reason we make toxins water soluble for renal elimination. When we talk about biotransformation, I'm usually talking about liver transformation, but their biotransformation using these cytochrome enzymes occur in other places as well, so don't forget that. Peripheral transformation, gastrointestinal transformation, some of the steroids that I'm going to talk about, they undergo the same philosophy of biotransformation, but it does not occur in the liver. When I'm talking about biotransformation, we're talking about the liver. All right, remember this xenobiotic word. The human body is constantly exposed to all sorts of foreign substances. There's, there's all sorts of, you know, in this class, chemistry is, is any group of atoms, any group of molecules is a, is a chemical. I don't think there's anything in existence that's not some kind of chemical, at least in a pharmacology class. And when you eat plants and animals and whatever you eat, you're exposed to all sorts of substances that are foreign to your body. And many of these substances may have no effect being physiologic inert, but according to wherever I got my definition, a xenobiotic is, a externally, is a, an exogenously made drug. And so some of these may have a physiologic response. Many plants do create physiologic responses in humans, and that's something that we're getting ready to talk about. Well, your liver, it sees these things that you're eating and says, oh, no, we're going to change this and we're going to change that and we're going to change this. Your liver is this metabolic machine transforming all the stuff that you've eaten into stuff that is hopefully non-toxic. And all that occurs with something called the cytochrome P450 enzymes, the CYP family of enzymes. These enzymes metabolize thousands upon thousands of not only endogenous made inside of the body, but exogenous made outside of the body, chemicals or compounds or molecules, whatever word you want to use. And many of the CYP enzymes, they can metabolize all sorts of chemicals or substrates. So most of the enzymes that we talk about in pharmacology class, they'll only take one thing and change it into something else. All right, when we talk about adenylylcyclase, it will only take ATP and convert that to cyclic AMP. When we talk about the cytochrome P450 enzymes, they can see all sorts of stuff and make changes to it. All right, they don't have just one chemical. That's what substrate means. There's another chemical word that needs to be changed in the notes. All right. So the CYP enzymes can metabolize many different drugs, many different chemicals. Any one CYP enzyme 
can metabolize many different drugs, many different chemicals, many different molecules, and make those more water soluble because that's really what it's trying to do. So that's why they're so important. We talked about an aromatic ring in our first lecture because aromatic rings are everywhere in biologic systems. Like phenylalanine, it's an essential amino acid. You can't make phenylalanine. But your liver will see that aromatic ring and go, oh, we need to do something about that. Your liver will see that aromatic ring and put a hydroxide group on it because it makes the aromatic ring more water soluble. And that's what your liver is trying to do. It's trying to take things that are not water soluble, fat soluble things like that, and say, oh, we better do something with that and put a hydroxide group on it. So your liver does this. Your liver does this as part of biotransformation. So here we've taken an essential amino acid and converted it into something that we need as well, tyrosine. Steroid synthesis occurs in other places of the body, and we'll talk about that later, but if you look at sterol, steroid, cholesterol, that's where those sterol words come from. You make steroid hormones out of cholesterol. All right. And if you look at the conversion of cholesterol into aldosterone and cortisone and some of the other, glu or the other steroids we'll talk about, notice that we've started with cholesterol and notice we put little oxygen groups in the different places to make the different steroids. And your liver is looking at, or the cytochrome enzymes are looking at these little carbon rings and thinking, oh, we better, we better do something about that. All right. So the reason we talk about drug biotransformation is most drugs are fat soluble or strongly bound to plasma proteins. We'd not be able to get rid of them out of our kidneys unless we made them more water soluble. Well, the problem is toxins that come into the body are fat soluble or strongly bound to plasma proteins. They're not readily filtered by the kidneys either, just like when we talked about bilirubin. It's a natural toxin made by your body when it breaks down bilirubin and the toxin would kill you very quickly other than the fact that your liver changes it, it conjugates it into something water soluble so your body can just get rid of the bilirubin, no problem. Here's polycyclic aromatic rings and they tend to be very toxic and so that's why your liver will look at polycyclic aromatic rings or your liver will just look at aromatic rings just like the one on phenylalanine and say hmm could be a problem we're turning it into something else right. so your liver is going to see these aromatic rings and it's going to want to oxidize them or conjugate them so that you can get them out of your body so most drugs or toxins would have a very prolonged duration of action if elimination de depended on renal excretion. Yeah, maybe. This is what's important here. You need to know the difference. You need to know that phase one reactions are oxidations. They can occur in any order. We can have phase two reactions without phase ones. We can have phase ones without phase two. Phase two can come first before phase one. So the names uh, one and two don't imply any kind of order. But phase one reactions are oxidations. And this in con involves conversion to a water-soluble metabolite. This means we're going to take a drug and we're going to make it war more water-soluble, just like what we did with the phenylalanine, the amino acid, by putting a hydroxide group on it and making it more water-soluble, tyrosine. And so that's an oxidation reaction, just basically taking something similar to an oxygen group or something similar to an oxygen, like a sulfur group, and um, putting it on the drug to make it more water-soluble. So when they talk about phase one reactions, those are oxidations. What's important to know is that phase two reactions are conjugations. We're not just going to take a little hydroxide group and stick it on something. We're going to take something very big like a glucose or any of the similar glucose molecules that I've mentioned here. We'll take something big and water soluble and we'll stick it on there so it becomes immediately water soluble and easily eliminated just like we did with the bilirubin. Bilirubin undergoes conjugation Bilirubin undergoes conjugation so that you can make, turn that toxin into something water-soluble and easily eliminated. And so that's why if you're in the surgery business and you want to know if somebody has obstructive gallbladder disease, 
you'll compare their conjugated with their unconjugated bilirubin. And that's where that conjugation word comes from. I think I mentioned this, the CYP enzymes. CYP enzymes and cytochrome P450 enzymes, they're all the same thing in this class. And so they can multiply all sorts of different reactions. And that's why they're so important in our bodies. So here, here's the animation that I have for today. Cyto, cell, chrome, color, P450, the wavelength of light that is the color of your liver. Hmm, liver colored, liver colored cell enzymes. That's what this means. That's what cytochrome P450 means. All right. And so this is my cytochrome P450, and I think that is the P450 wavelength of light being reflected. And what I'm trying to show you is this enzyme can take all sorts of little chemicals and change them into more water-soluble chemicals. Okay, that's what I'm trying to show you here. And I don't want to do that. <laughs> 